excuse me. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm back on the yard. Uh, I just got to go home for one night. But praise the Lord for that. I got to see my little grandbaby's second birthday party. Actually, her birthday's today, but they went ahead and had the party because Papa was home yesterday. <laughs> and we had a wonderful time at home. It was a, a very, very great blessing for me to be there. Um, because I didn't think I was going to be there, to be honest with you. Uh, it just worked out that way. All right, we're in the study of the book of Acts. And, uh, I, uh, we've come a long way. We're in chapter 15. We're over halfway through the book now. And, uh, chapter 15 is, uh, Council at Jerusalem. What it is, is they're having, well, I, I'll go into it in the, uh, in the scripture itself but they're having a dispution uh, the Jews are still thinking you have to be circumcised and follow the law and that Christianity is a branch of uh, Judaism and uh, Paul uh, and Barnabas had an argument with those guys up in Antioch so they're going to go down to Jerusalem and see the apostles and settle this uh, settle this for good uh, chapter 15 answers two great questions it's one of the greatest uh, chapters in the entire New Testament on salvation because it answers two questions it answers do you have to do any work to get saved and do you have to do any work to stay saved and the answer to both of those questions is no and uh but still today, you got people that say that you have to follow the law, and you have people that say you have to be baptized, and you have to uh, speak in tongues or anything like that. But we're going to find out right here, the scripture is very clear, that you don't have to do anything to get saved uh, except uh, trust in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you don't have to do anything to stay saved. All right, let's just read it and go from there. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. There's a work. Now, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dis dissension and disputation, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So they're going up there to ask them, do you have to be circumcised to be saved? And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Venus, Venus and Samaria declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and they cause great joy uh, unto all the brethren. Now the Gentiles are getting saved, remember. Sorry about the movement on <laughs> my camera. I'm not very good at that. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. They're saying they have to do that to stay saved. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. You remember Peter was the first one to preach it in Acts chapter 10. And God which knoweth the hearts uh, bear them witness giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith 
By faith you're saved. You're saved by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon their neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Uh, they couldn't keep the law, and they're Jews. Why, how do they figure the Gentiles are going to be able to? And this is the most important verse in this thing, and I want you to notice the change in Peter's theology. But we believe that through the grace of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. I want you to notice now, Acts chapter 2, 38. Well, I'm just going to go there so I don't misquote it. Acts chapter 2, 38. Here's what he preached. Now when they were hurt, uh, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Notice the change in his theology. It's a transitional book, folks. If you can get that, it'll open up the Bible to you. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. No baptism. No speaking in tongues. No keeping the law, he just said. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered. James is the uh, brother of Christ here. He is the, uh, uh, the bishop of the church at Jerusalem, so he's going to have the last word here saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me, Simeon hath declared unto, unto God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. We're talking about the body of Christ now. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the temple of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. He knew he was going to let Gentiles in from the very beginning. It was all part of his uh, grand plan, and he still has a grand plan. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which are among the Gentiles and turn to God, but that we write unto them that we might, that they might that they abstain, sorry about my, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from the things strangled and from blood. And Moses of old time has in every city them that preached him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. That then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church. The whole church is in agreement here. So there is no works for salvation to keep get you saved. There is no works for salvation to keep you saved. Then it pleased the apostles and elders and the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, Silas is going to become a very important missionary and evangelist. Chief men among the brethren, and they wrote letters by them. After this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul saying ye must be circumcised 
and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. I don't understand, like the seven day of Venice, if you don't uh, keep the law and go on the Sabbath day and stuff, they think you're not saved. And I think the Bible's pretty clear about this. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazard, hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That man, they got stoned, dude, remember? Uh, we have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who, who shall be able to tell you the same things by mouth for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than whoops uh, I need something that non-stick something uh, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication and from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well and fare well. Okay. Old Testament, you're supposed to stay away from the blood, drinking the blood. And in the New Testament, he just said you're supposed to stay away from drinking the blood. So the Catholics, when they say they're changing the wine into blood and you're drinking it, is contradicting Scripture. All right. Which, when they have, when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also of themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space. They were let go in in peace from the brethren unto the apostles, notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still. Uh, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached uh, the Lord, the word of the Lord, and see how they they do. And Barnabas determined to take uh, with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought it not good to take him with him, who departed from them from Paphilia and went not with them to to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. All right, this just shows you that... Uh, uh, Sometimes God might split a church and it's uh, God's will. These were both uh, spirit-filled Christians uh, that walked with God and uh, they just had a disagreement and they went their separate ways and the Lord used that to... Uh, so that was your first <laughs> uh, church that split. And uh, it was of the will of God, actually. He, he moved them in two directions and uh, doubled his gain. So that's the chapter of uh, 15 in the book of Acts. And I wanted to... Uh, and this happened around uh, 52 A.D. So this is... Like I said, uh, Acts spans 30 uh, years. So there you go. I got, I got my Bible right there. Uh, my new one. All right, folks, Lord bless you. Uh, read your Bibles, pray without ceasing. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here in Georgia. We're going to head on back to California one more time. And then I'll be coming back and uh, going home for a week. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless you.